Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Fatboy Diaries. I'm Cameron Grant, and whether you decided to watch this because you like me, or because you just saw J.K. Rowling the name and you decided, mm, I like her, so might as well try this guy out. I appreciate it either way. I wanted to start this off by announcing that we officially have 10 subscribers to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Now, a lot of people have asked me how I dealt with bullying growing up. I can't answer this because I don't think I ever dealt with it. I found a way to cope with it so I didn't become an angry individual. This video is my love letter to JK Rowling because without her, I don't think I would have ever made it through school. This video is not going to be lighthearted and I apologize for that, but I have to be honest if I'm going to dedicate this to JK Rowling. So. This is the first episode in a segment I like to call Real Talk. My entire life, I have dealt with thoughts of suicide. That's what motivated me to write The Flyaway Girl. If you want to check it out, just go to my channel, Cameron Grant. It's one of the trailers. Thank you if you do. Those thoughts are what also brought acting into my life. People ask you when you think about becoming famous if you can handle what comes with a success. You know, the paparazzi and all your business. People constantly degrading you on every little thing you do. But what people don't seem to know is that I've had a taste of being famous since I was a little kid. In elementary school, I was bullied for being fat. You know, of course, whatever. My bullying was spawned from betrayal. My best friend at the time turned his back on me and I never understood why. One second, I was a normal kid. The next, I was bullied by every single person I came in contact with. My bullying was like a virus. Just a few people at first, until the entire school treated me like an infection, something so terrible that it needed to be snuffed out. I didn't want to live anymore after that. I didn't want to get up in the morning. I prayed to get taken in the night so I wouldn't have to face the next day. I became numb to life, just repeating my daily routine, not really existing. Just a robot programmed to go place to place, <laughs> to learn, to eat, to sleep. I never knew what it was like to have a friend after that. That's when Harry Potter came into my life. The story, the characters, and just the structure of the sentences, and the detail of the world. I fell in love with it. She wrote a story so potent that it allowed me to occupy a space where I felt loved by Harry, Ron, and Hermione. To quote Little Big Love Good, it's like being with friends. I was grateful for those hours I could spend deep in those pages because as the years went by, just like with Harry, I became more and more infamous. Except Harry was famous for being a hero. I was infamous for being a disease. Carrier of some germ that would infect other children if they came near me, but somehow never went diagnosed. By the time I was in fifth grade, every child in Moses Lake somehow knew my face even though I had never met them before. In the supermarket, with my mom, children, boys and girls, would run screaming if I made eye contact. And if I touched them, they would collapse on the ground possessed, overcome by demons. All in the name of some joke I was never privy to. The only constant in my life was Harry Potter and seeing him grow up with the Dursleys and deal with Draco Malfoy and Voldemort kept that voice inside my head going. The one that said, if Harry can get through this, you can. That's when Dobby came into the world. A house elf. A creature whose only purpose in life is to serve a higher being. But never thinking he deserved more than that. It was through Dobby's eyes that 
I found the closest thing to a metaphor to how I was growing up. Because just like Dobby felt throughout the series, especially in Chamber of Secrets, as long as Harry was alive and his story was being told, I could live with the horror in my life. My parents never believed me about how bad it was. They didn't heed my plea when I asked them to transfer schools, but just reminded me that bullying exists in other schools as well. And it wasn't until those encounters in grocery stores that I believed them. I couldn't escape this pain. They were everywhere. Everywhere. But in this story, created by a woman who never knew me, but whose words, her words echoed the pain in my soul. And like Dobby, my faith in her and Harry never waver. Every tragedy, every problem in my life was bearable as long as Harry Potter lived. As long as J.K. Rowling kept on writing. Then came 2007. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows came out when I graduated from elementary school. And while my life still wasn't perfect, the popularity of my disease had died down enough that life was almost bearable. Almost. But I was one of five kids in my elementary school who weren't going to Frontier Middle School. I was going to the other middle school, Chief Moses, where all the children who knew of my infamy, but I never partook, seemed to uproar upon my arrival. It was like I was at the beginning all over again. I was cornered in the hallway by children who knew me, but had never met me. That's when I found solace in a teacher. Someone so kind, so caring, that I knew what Harry must have felt having Hagrid on the grounds of Hogwarts. Confidant to confide in. An adult who mentored you, told you that you had a chance reminded you that there was a happy place in, the, in this world despite everything you knew falling apart. Even when everyone minded you how worthless they thought you were. Thank you for being my Hagrid. <laughs> Miss Winningham, to help me make it through the darkest time in my life, you were the first person to ever tell me that they believed in me. Those months at Chief Mo made me even more grateful for J.K. Rowling. I returned to that place I was at when I was in first grade. Quote Will Trainer from me before you. I just about existed. I prayed something to go on so I wouldn't have to face it anymore. But <laughs> rereading the Harry Potter books <laughs> and seeing Harry stick up to the Dursleys more and more because he knew the treatment of him wasn't right gave me the strength to put myself out on a ledge. <laughs> Thankfully, not literally. <laughs> I had a paper out. And one day while I was folding papers, there was an ad up for the haunted house run by Night Scare Productions. And there was a phone number. And I I called and I went in for an audition and I was working there later that week. <laughs> and that's when I discovered acting. Through the house, I felt what Harry must have felt riding his nimbus through the house. I soar high above the clouds, out of reach able to see the world but not for not being able to touch you for the for the whomping will to feel like a, a golden snitch in your grasp but, but despite all that I am not a Harry Potter lover I love Harry Potter because of the words spun by JK Rowling's web this was never more true than when she released the casual vacancy she taught me to help compassion for even the most horrible of people. To see a drug addict as more than their addiction 
or to see a mother is more than their affliction. <laughs> she taught me how to reason with Corman Strike in The Cuckoo's Calling, or The Silkworm, and Career of Evil. Not only that, but she taught me how to open myself up and soften the shell I'd put around myself for so long. Without her, I never would have found my love for acting. I never would have found my love for writing. I never would have <laughs> found my love for film. Without JK Rowling, I would not be here because I honestly believe I would have committed suicide. Without her writing giving me hope and reminding me that good things are possible if you work hard enough I never would have left that robot that took over my life for so many years behind. I'm in New York City because J.K. Rowling taught me how to believe in a dream to the point to make it a reality. Not only that, but she taught me that in order to change the world, to prevent other children from going through what I went through, I have to let them see what it looks like to have a good life. You just have to be strong and you have to believe that what you're doing matters. To quote Alvis Dumbledore, there will come a time when you have to choose between what is right and what is easy. There is a journey ahead and all you can do is keep on fighting. This is the end of my video. So here is my final words. Thank you, JK Rowling, for seeing me through 22 years and giving me a light to see my way through the shadows. Even in one I lost all hope. Your pages, your writing, fuels me to keep resilient in an industry where I know that I don't have the ideal characteristics of what it means to be an actor. Thank you for giving the world Harry Potter and taking care of your audience. And finally, thank you for helping me become the man I am today. I am not making this video in the expectations that I will ever get to meet you, but that this video finds you maybe when you're facing your darkest time and it can remind you that what you do matters. Your work changes people and it makes them believe in themselves. So hopefully one day this video can do the same thing for you. To close on a nerdy way, hoping you are well, Cameron Grant, US muggle. <laughs> I guess. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, this video has a lot to do with bullying. So um, if please share it, please like it, please leave a comment because um, the hardest thing I did growing up was feeling alone and never really seeing anybody else who would talk about being bullied openly and be honest about it. So uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want, but at least please share it to as many people as you can because this might be to JK Rowling, but it's just about finding hope in even the most unlikeliest of places. All you have to do is remember to turn on the light. Leave a comment if you know who I just quoted. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.